So he is a history aficionado, teacher, tour guide, author, and accountant, which I did not know. Yes, that's <laughs> this new. This man wears many hats, but today this discussion will be related to his main passion, sharing his knowledge on the historic heritage of St. Kitts and Nevis. Through history, we can all learn how past societies, systems, ideologies, cultures, and technologies were built, how they operated, and how they have changed. This rich history helps us to paint a detailed picture of where we stand today. Today we have in our midst Mr. Leonard Stapleton, who will be sharing with us how Christmas came to the Federation. And I always thought it was because of Santa Claus, but <laughs> I'm going to learn how Christmas came to the Federation from a division's perspective. So good morning to you. Good morning, Leonard. Jamie. Good morning, Vivi. Good morning. Really happy to be here. And good morning to everybody out there listening and viewing. I hope I look good enough. Yes, you look great. <laughs> Hold on, let me cast you. You cast your suit. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Do something so everything else. is symbolism. And um, to start with symbolism, a lot of the thing that we know about Christmas is symbolism. Okay? Um, you know, our ancestors are Africans. So they came here already worshipping gods, not the Christian gods. So they, they were indoctrinated into that. But one thing I could tell you, there's no set of people on planet Earth more spiritual than Damn. the black race, okay? So when they got into worshiping um, Christ, they did it on a scale never seen before. I mean, you've heard of Mahalia Jackson and those people who sing gospel songs. And well, you see the kind of... Emotion, right? yes. It's, it's the spirit and everything. And so... That is how um, Christmas was, okay? I recall, I mean, I'm not that old, but because I grew up with old people. <laughs> ah, okay. Right? So you have to first be arranged to be born in a house with old people to understand how Christmas really was. And a lot of the preparations started long before Christmas. You would know Christmas is coming when you start to hear the carols, you start to see your, your grandparents soaking the fruits. Mm. Yes. Right? In the For ground, the cake, right? right. <laughs> Not all the time it was wine, sometimes it was straight up ham on. I've heard a few tales. <laughs> I think there's one gentleman in food cake. Yeah. Oh. There's a gentleman, just recently I was inquiring about somebody who's doing the authentic rum cake. <laughs> and they told me about a guy who starts to soak his ham on from January. He, the fruits are soaked. In Hammond from January. I gotta tell you this much. <laughs> when you say Hammond, you reminded me of my great grandmother who was also in the division and known for that. <laughs> oh, wow. Some of for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Just and, a little. Uh, Just a little. The other thing I recall, and you know, only when you get older and wiser, you, you make the, the connections. The cleaning of the house. Yes. 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 I like, remember that. It, it, now you think of it. You know, I have children now, and I recall. Bringing home the baby from the hospital, they would instruct you to make sure the house is clean. Okay? And you know Christmas is about the birth of oh, Christ. Oh, yes. And Christ being born in a manger and everything. And you know Christ was born and basically on a grass bed. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of bed our ancestors slept in, even mm. my grandparents. They would do something in terms of changing the grass that was in the bed. That was done at I Christmas heard. time. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Uh, one thing I tell you about those grass, they're known for what they call bed bugs. So it might be the only time of the year where you don't get the bite from the bed bugs. <laughs> but the cleaning was a sort of spiritual thing, went into mm. the cleaning. Mm. They, would, they didn't have the fancy brooms, so they would pick some bush. Okay, I think I showed you some of the bush. And yes. The yes, yes, yes. The indigo yes. bush is one of them. Yes. And there was another bush that when you sweep the house with that, you can't find any cobweb, any dust <laughs> at all, better than the vacuum cleaner. Okay? <laughs> and you saw that kind of fervor going into cleaning and, you know, painting and everything yes. to, to thing. And it's almost as if the preparation that you make when you bring in a child to the ah. the linkage now. I see the connection now. Yes. I never saw it before, but now I see <laughs> the connection. You wow. Know, and um, you take that with you. Mm. And you see nowadays a lot of people get still get into the habit of cleaning. Yes. Sometimes they don't even know why they're doing it for, but no. it is that 
hidden. I never knew what we were doing in there. I, I know that, you know, growing up with women in the household, it was a thing to change the curtain yes. before Christmas. Yes. I, I don't know if that's linked to what you say, because yeah. for me, the curtains could stay up all year. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's a curtain. I remember my, my grandmother, you know, there was always this dilemma. Probably still exists. Where do you turn the colorful part of the curtain? Yes. Inside, outside? or That's inside. <laughs> you know, my grandmother used to say, we're putting up the curtain for us. Not for the neighbors. <laughs> and so the pretty part would be in. And of course, when you enter the home, you get that kind of feeling. And so, yes. so it's not a showing off to the outside, but mostly to bring that feeling yes. inside. Leonard, I want you to tell us now uh, what types of activities were traditionally noticed before the advent of Carnival. Right. Um, I was telling you about the whole spirit of people moving from you know, house to house, and, then, and that's why people get let down these days, because whereas people still have that thing about preparing, the lot of cooking they do is really something inside of them telling them, prepare for people to come. But we've lost that part of the culture where people actually go to people's house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You cook all this food, and it's you and your three children, or so, you know? Right. <laughs> and one of the things I recall most, though, this moving from house to house is not just with your tolang hand, you know. Most of the time, you're following a troop. Mm. Okay, the Christ, not the troop with the skinny thing. Um, the the stick away. Yeah, right. Okay. Not those things. <laughs> We're talking about the cultural troops mm -hmm. with the music and the regalia that the people wear, the costumes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, there's something that they call sagwa. And sagwa starts all in the night. Okay, these are men, respectable men in the community. You see them in their mother night gown and everything, put on some brazier <laughs> and they're singing and the, the, the music accompaniment for the, the sagwa is the string band. Mm. Okay? And um, the, the other ones I recall was the Nyeka business. I heard that one yeah. before. Not so sagwa. I heard you before better today. not do anything <laughs> foolish to a be here. Otherwise, you see yourself getting played on Christmas Day for everybody to see, you know? And then, of course, the masquerade, okay? The masquerade is very dear to me. And uh, every single thing about the masquerade is a symbol of something of our heritage, okay? Down to the color, the red, down to the ribbons, the mirrors, which are supposed to symbolize the whole soul thing where you could see through the soul. Wow. Oh. Yep, when you look through a mirror, because you're seeing yourself, but it's not material. So that's your soul. And the, the, the peacock feathers that's supposed to enchant you and create this kind of sexual thing, because that's how the peacock would tantalize you. Yes. Right? Right, right, right. Everything is there. And the dances. I know um, there are some things about whether or not um, our culture is static or evolving. Mm -hmm. The masquerade which we hold dear is showing us that it has evolved. Because, believe it or not, there are six dances in the masquerade performance. And three of them for sure. Three or four of them are classic ballroom dances. Wow. Yep. Very old ballroom dances that were danced in the French and English um, palaces. Mm -hmm. The first two, the, the quadrille and the jig, those are classic French ballroom dances. You also have the waltz, the viola. The, um, the fine dance, and then we have the wild mass. Those, the wild mass is the one that is purely African, mixed with a bit of Indian, the way they move with the tomahawks and all those kind mm. of things. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of cultures. So as we mix with different people, the culture, of course, evolved. evolved. Right. There was a time when cook up and go to water was the number one thing. Now it's barbecue chicken. <laughs> okay? I don't even so want to get to the judges. other type of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but you will see how the culture evolved. But what must remain important is the, you must be able to show the young people where everything evolved from. Yeah.